he didn't start, but mm -hmm. or underneath him. And all he does is block. Nope. Look. So we ready? No. Ready now. I'm ready to stop me. Welcome to Prosperity is Yours. I'm your host this evening. I'm Dr. Ken. With me, as always, is Dr. Glenn. Amen. And we want to thank you for joining us. Our guest that we had scheduled is coming a little late, so they'll be joining us on the broadcast. But I want to refer to um, Dr. Glenn and how we start Prosperity is Yours. And I want you to join us. you got something handy to write with. I'd ask you to take a few notes. And Pastor, uh, Dr. Glenn... Tell us where we left off last time. Uh, the show, usually I co-host with uh, uh, Dr. Joshua. Uh, he's unavailable on assignment tonight. But I want to uh, start where we left off last time with Boaz. Could you uh, bring the people up to date to where we were and absolutely. how that starts? Absolutely, absolutely. Greetings in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So what we were talking about last week is how important it is for us to start coming together and using our gifts and our talents in order to help each other in ministry. So uh, Pastor Joshua has been, give, been, been very maniacal about trying to encourage us to use our gifts. If you're not using your gifts, if you're not in ministry anywhere, he's encouraging you to come and be a part of Vision Television. And um, what it all boils down to is about generosity, which is what we're going to bring our focus to on today. And we're going to bring a lot of focus to the story of Boaz and how generous he was even though he was living in abundance, he was very generous. And a lot of his generosity in the scripture was focused toward the story of Ruth. So that's what we really want to bring focus on today is Amen. generosity and how important it is for us to be generous in this season that we're in right now, starting year 2019. Amen. And I just wanted to add our uh, first scripture I want to throw out there as Dr. Glenn is getting set up to give us a uh, reread the story a little bit. And we'll take it from there and we'll comment. My mercies are renewed every morning for every person on this earth. Laminations 3, 22 to 23. So every single morning we're renewed. We can start all over, the Lord says. Another thought that I have uh, that I want to encourage you with is energy and persistence means being a conqueror. Now, what do we want from, if we want God to bless us, we have to prove to ourselves that we're worthy of his blessings before we ask him to give us something before he'll open that door. That's good. What am I talking about? If we don't think we're worthy, that means we don't think that we'll be able to do it. That means we don't trust him. So if we don't trust him, how can we step out and pay? So I want to give you this thought real quick before Dr. Glenn reads this starting scripture there's always a way and a reason why you meet people either it's for you for you needed to change your life or they're there to change yours remember if the ministry is just about us if we don't have any help it's never been made god has never made us like that the, vi the vision is always bigger than ourselves so we need other people to help us so if you're thinking, you know, how are you going to do it, that, that might be the wrong thought because you need other people. So the ministry is always bigger. So think bigger than yourself. You need others. Everybody around you that you know, that you're close with, that you feel a, a genuine connection, your friends, your family, your coworkers, whatever it is, your church member friends that you hang out with, I'm telling you right now, you are called to be with them, to co-labor with the thing that you're supposed to be doing. Remember, it's up to us to find our calling. God will give us the purpose in our calling. Dr. Glenn? Amen, amen. So I want to bring to your attention um, a formula that the Holy Spirit just given to me right now. It's a very familiar formula, um, but we have to understand that when it comes to the kingdom of heaven, he will always give us instruction. There is a process for everything that we do. And Boaz gave us a very good example of one of God's most amazing processes our instruction um, as we have learned before um, on the show the colony I've spoken about the instruction and how everything has instructions trees have instructions uh, 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 plants have instructions animals have instructions in order to have the, pro the the prophecy fulfilled so what he taught us was a very important instruction on giving now what I love about Boaz is the fact that he was very wealthy Boaz didn't really have um, a, a need 
everything he had that God blessed him with. But he also he understood this one thing, and it was called giving. And the scripture tells us in the book of Luke to give, and it will come back to you. So what um, what Boaz helped me to understand is that in our giving is actually where we have a very important concept of receiving at. But the Bible tells it is better to give than to receive. So what happened in this story is that um, Boaz felt so much compassion for Ruth, so much compassion for her that he could have given her if he wanted to. He could have given her whatever yeah. she whatever he wanted to give her, whatever his desire was. But there was a very peculiar thing that happened in that he allowed her the opportunity to be blessed from his blessing. So he didn't give her, and um, there's a, a story that I remember where um, a multimillionaire had said something that was very profound to me, and he said this. He said that there has to be skin in the game in order for you to appreciate something or a blessing. And what that basically means is that you have to put something in in order to get something out. That he doesn't take time, and I'm talking about Mr. Pena, he doesn't take time to just give people money. He doesn't just give people resources. What he does is he gives them opportunity, and they have to expound off of that opportunity. Mm. So what Boaz did in the story of Ruth is he gave her an opportunity to be blessed in the blessing that he had. So he gave her the opportunity to, uh, uh, to, to, to get from what he had. So there was seed on the ground. He told her, if you want it, take as much as you need because I want to be a blessing to you. And I'm not going to tell the full story because we want to get to the end of it um, by the end of the segment. But I just want to start the concept there of being generous. And in your generosity, God really only asks you to give from where you can give at. He doesn't ask you to give your rent money. He doesn't ask you to give your car note. He just says, just give from what, I, from what I've already blessed you with. Bless somebody else with it. When it came to feeding the 5,000, he didn't ask them, you know, well, get 5,000 fish. The question that Jesus asked was, what do you have? I don't need all of these different things. I just need you to give me what I've already blessed you with. And I can take what I've already blessed you with and bless the multitudes with it. So I want to make sure that we understand that the beginning of the story is about the generosity of somebody who gave from where they were blessed at now, but not just giving, but he gave an opportunity for them to receive a blessing from his current blessings. Good word. I just want to change it up a little bit and give you a thought in Psalms 68, 19. It says, every day God thinks of you. Mm. Think about that for a second. It also says in 1 Peter 5, 7, every minute God cares for you. Wow. Well, that is true. Let me, uh, we're still on Boaz, but let me, uh, there's Pastor Matt. Maybe we can invite him up real quick to come on set. Yeah, come around this way. Cool. <laughs> Thank you. So, that's okay. Take this. We're talking about Boaz. L let me give you a quick thought real quick, Pastor Matt. This is Pastor Matt. He uh, pastors a church here in Southern California. Um, let us believe in the hope. And New Year's, I can't help but say something about the new beginnings, and I'll set Pastor Matt up with it. L let me ask you this question first. Let me set this scene first. Jesus arrives at the pool near a gate in Jerusalem, and it's called the Sheep Gate or the Pool of Bethesda. Now watch this. Work with me. Just give me a second, and I'll set uh, Pastor Matt up, and we'll continue the story with Dr. Glenn. A great number of disabled people use this. They lie there. They're blind. They're lame. They're paralyzed. John 5.3. If you're taking notes, that's where you can start with. Now, the Bible says an angel stirred the water, so the first one is into the pool would be healed. Question. Could this be considered a modern-day faith healing evangelist? Stay with me here. My point is the evangelist is a messenger from God. The angel, wasn't he sent by God? So, thus, the pool of Bethesda means house of grace. So, God is showing us his grace. So, therefore, now that back to the story, we know the man has suffered for 38 years. And Jesus asked, do you want to get well? Now, I'm going somewhere with this. Just bear with me just a little longer. My second thought is, the man's response explains that Jesus is getting well hasn't possible, isn't possible for him. Isn't that how we thought in the new year? We thought every problem we've had, every ailment, whether it be financially, physical, relationship strains, we thought it wasn't possible to go into this new year. But the one that helped them into the pool or somebody else that got there first. That was always his excuse. How many excuses have we made this year? 
We are planning on losing weight this year. We're planning for a better job. We're planning to start that business. We're planning for that new relationship. That's the one that we're going to marry. I mean, how many times in the new year we all have great expectations, and we should. So let me build your faith a little bit. But the man had lost hope. So this sounds familiar like at a church meeting, we, you know, we're making excuses why we can't go to church. We're making excuses why we can't have that faith evangelist pray for our healing. We're making excuses for that financial expert that comes with the church that's going to give us principles like we will in the next segment at 7.30 in Marketplace and Authority. I want to give a couple of points, three points on key to prosperity. But the meetings are far too far from us. Uh, sometimes we can't get a ride. Fear always dominates our lives where I'm going. So we're, our wounded heart never gets whole, so therefore we never trust them. So we begin to believe the ways that we are, the ways that we think, will always be. I'm here to tell you, Pastor Matt, this is for you. At this point, we need to know in the story, the Bible it says that this man, he will do it for you. So that's why I'm telling you the story. If he can do this healing for him, he can do it for us. There's faith in the Bible. That's why you need to read the Bible. So... Jesus said, listen, there's life-changing words in Luke 5.5. 5. You can look at all over the Bible. One word from God, it changed their life. You know, he, he said, throw the net on the other side, and they caught all those fishes. I could go on and on. John 2.7, where Jesus turned the water and wine. And there's so many examples of one word from God. But get this, he said, pick up your mat and walk, John 5.8. So the reason why I brought this story up Get up translates is a regular word used in the New Testament to describe resurrection. Isn't that what we're doing now? In the year 2019, actually 19 means faith and hearing. Don't we need our faith gets bigger and stronger because we hear who? We hear him that sent us the faith. So resurrection is where I want to start at. So we're getting this story demonstrates that God is here for the world. Uh, it's up to us. Uh, it, God wants to come to us in the world to resurrect us. His kingdom breaks out on earth and the form and the new life and the new creation. So we have to start following God, and it's time to reimagine hope for ourselves. It's time for somebody, either for us or for somebody we love. He's the God of new beginnings. He's the one that breathes lives in it, into our dead parts of our soul. He invites us to trust Him to bring pain and failure, uh, our disappointment, all to Him. But remember, it starts with our obedience to trust. The minute the man was obedient and got up and picked up his mat, he was healed. Something to think about it. Your thought, Pastor Matt, on are the new beginnings that God has for us in 2019. Well, whatever God has put in your heart, uh, first of all, thank you to Dr. Ken for allowing me to be here with you tonight. And whatever God has put into your heart, whatever things he's, he's planted in your heart and in your mind to do, I would say do those things. And uh, without having hesitation, just with the spirit that says, you know, yes and amen, Lord. You called me to do X, Y, and Z. You called me to open up this business. You called me to start this ministry, to take this step in faith, God, that I will do it in faith. And I do believe, Dr. Ken, that this year, uh, as with every year that has passed before it, whatever we do, let's do it unto the Lord. Amen. Do it with faith. And if our heart is set on pleasing God, then we can't miss the mark. Amen. So 2019 amen. is yours. And God has given it to you like everything else in your life. You're a steward over it. What will you do with 2019? You and God know. Amen. So just let it work the way that God has designed it to. Good work. So let's get back to the story with Dr. Glenn about how his generosity changed the whole setting. Amen. It's so amazing how um, both you and Matt both brought up something about the new year. Um, if we look at this story, which is actually found in Ruth chapter 2, yes. we find that it was a new chapter in their life. That's it. And what we find is, I want to read this to you out of uh, uh, Ruth chapter 2. It says, verse 5, Then Boaz asked his foreman, so remember Ruth, I was saying she was out there picking, picking from his field. Um, then Boaz, who was a very influential man, he had influence. And remember, that influence comes from God. So the influence that he had was the blessing. He was walking in his blessing. Yes. Then Boaz asked his foreman, who is the young woman out there? Who does she belong to? And the foreman replied, she is the young woman from Moab who uh, came back from with Naomi. She asked me this morning if she could gather grain behind the harvesters. She, had, she has been hard at work ever since except for a few minutes 
rest in the shelter. Now watch this. Boaz went over and said to Ruth, listen, my daughter, stay right here with us when you gather your grain. Don't go to any other fields. Stay right behind the young, work, the young women working in the field. Now, the point that I want to bring up right here is that it was in the process of her laboring. The harvest is ripe, but the labor is a fruit. It was in the process of her laboring that she was noticed by the men of influence. That's good. Why am I saying this? I believe that it's very prophetic what Pastor or Dr. Joshua is doing right now with Vision Television. Yes. She allowed herself to be in a position where she was laboring. And in her laboring, the, the man of influence, the man of God recognized her. It wasn't while she was sitting at home. It wasn't while she was complaining. It wasn't while she was sitting at home wondering and hoping and wishing that that letter or that grain would come in the mail. It was in the process of her laboring. She wasn't out in the forefront. She was a humble, meek woman. It was in her humility. Watch this. When you are humble, God elevates you. Amen. In her humility is when the men of God, the men of influence, recognized her. And when he recognized her, he had a heart of compassion for her. So I want to encourage you today, just from reading this part, and we'll, we'll go a little bit further into this, but just remember that you have to get busy about your father's business in order for your gifts to make, oh, thank you, Holy Spirit, in order for your gifts to make room for you. Amen. If you're not utilizing your gifts, they will not make room for you. It's in the activation and the faith or the substance and the evidence mm. that you believe God is going to do something amazing is where you'll be recognized by the man or the woman of God who was put in your path in order to give you the blessing. So stay generous. Boaz was a generous man. And from his yes. generosity, God used him to be an influence in someone else's life who needed him. So I just want to encourage you with that. Remember, 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 it's about generosity. Boaz was a very generous man. And because he was so generous Ruth received a blessing from his generosity mm -hmm. so I want to encourage you again if you are sitting at home and you have all these wonderful yeah. gifts and talents and you're not using them Vision TV is calling on you we're sounding the alarm help we need some more laborers for the labor of Jesus Christ and I promise you that as you're laboring the scripture tells us that in your laboring you will see a manifestation of blessings beyond your wildest dreams good word now, Pastor uh, Matt, let me comment on that, and I think you're going exactly... Isn't it funny how we get the subject, and God, the, uh, the Holy Spirit, the anointing is so strong here. There's just so many thoughts going back and forth up here. Every word is left off from the other minister to continue on. It's just so exciting how they change together. Let me take you on 1 Peter 4.10 real quick. Pastor Matt, are we going to build our kingdom, or are we going to build our own life? Now, watch this. 1 Peter 4.10 says, God has given each one of us a gift, a great variety of spiritual gifts. Use them to serve one another. But I want to go a little deeper. And I got this from Sean Bolton. Listen to this. If we're hungry, we'll receive. God never exposes us to something that we can't become. Did you hear what I said? If you like the preaching anointing that Dr. Glenn has, you can receive the same too Amen. by faith. Now watch this. If we're exposed to us, now, if he does it for him, he'll do it for you. Amen. Now, there's a special impartation it will believe. It will be in the same, um, I, I thoroughly believe it we're in the same vicinity as he is. When you come to the studio and volunteer here, you can send under his anointing. Or uh, Pastor uh, Matt has a tremendous worshiping Amen. gift of Amen. revelation that if you want to really open up the Bible and read you know, what every word means and how to worship the Lord and, and just bring heaven to earth, Pastor Matt's your guy. What I'm getting at is this. You can receive the impartation by being in the same area as these great men of God. My point is, is you don't have to just sit at home and wonder what if God is doing. God is here to raise you up. Your thought, Pastor Matt. Amen. Well, I hear you talking about uh, building another man's ministry. And the Bible okay. says if you build God's house, he will build yours. And unless you're mm. faithful in another's ministry, how can God make you faithful in your own? Uh, I, I think the, the deal that would limit us and, and certain others that would come into ministry or, or partner in the field of ministry for the kingdom of heaven that would stall them out would be ambition mm. that comes from self or that derives from pride. Mm. And God is looking mm. for men and for women that will humbly and generously and selflessly Amen. putting others yes. first, serve, give, lend. And here's the key, expecting nothing in return. Oh, that's good. And if they'll give generously with a heart to give, not to receive, 
then God will find that person's heart faithful, trustworthy, and true, and he will pour blessing into their lap, more than they can contain. This wow. is the, the, the kingdom of heaven principle that unlocks the abundant lifestyle is through generous giving, and a generous person truly cannot be generous unless they give expecting to lose it forever. Mm. Wow. Our time, our talent, our treasure, whatever have you, if we give for the kingdom of heaven with that kind of an attitude, Lord, you've given me everything I could ever need. All I want in this life is to live for you and serve you, because what? I've already got eternity in heaven. I've got mm. paradise waiting for me on the other side of the veil. So what else do I have to to strive for in this life. Why, why am I scraping? Why am I scratching? Why am I jockeying for a position and elbowing within the ministry? No, there's room for everyone, right. especially right. with the attitude of generosity being at the forefront of our mind and our heart. It's no, please, you. No, no by all means, you go ahead. And we lift each other up. We begin to share in what's called the abundance of joy. When we generously give, and, and in ministry, giving opportunity to others, allowing them to take the position, allowing them to have the limelight or to have the front, the front light, and not, not to expect that for ourselves. I've noticed that in ministry in my own life and in my experiences, when we try to hold on to something that isn't ours, that God hasn't given to us, we can't hold on to it. We lose it. We, we can't lose sure. it any faster. Right. But if we release those things to God with a generous heart and a mindset of servanthood, then God begins to give you not only what you expect. Because last time I checked, if I get just my expectation met, I'm not very happy. Mm -hmm. not, no like you know, statement of extreme joy or elation ever started off with, well, that was just what I expected. That's mm -hmm. typically a statement that, that is preceded by or mm -hmm. followed by something like, <laughs> better luck next time. Mm -hmm. But with God, He doesn't just meet your expectation. Expectation is giving to somebody putting a, a, an amount or required return on the gift, and then receiving that and going, that's just what I expected. But when you give freely and generously, watch this. Now you have an opportunity to receive freely and generously, and then your expectation is exceeded by the giver of all gifts, and joy is really your portion. Well, that's powerful, mm -hmm. sir. Amen. Thank uh, God we got another hour afterwards because I want to speak into that exact point. But let me give you a prophetic thought. I sense people, Dr. Glenn, of God are frustrated at not being whole, as Pastor Matt said, and unwrapping their spiritual gifts. Now watch this. If you're not taking notes, take it now. I'm telling you, God's speaking now. I am discovering that people in all kinds around the world unwrap their gift that God has placed inside of us. Can a gift be unwrapped by itself? No, neither can we. Now watch this. When it comes to unwrapping spiritual gifts, you don't need... We don't need to get the, uh, to open them, but God uses other people. Did you hear that? Other people to open them, get uh, the gift inside of us. It's not for us. It's for others. Now, Genesis 50, 20, where did I get this in the message? It says, you plan evil against me, but God used these same plans for my good. So as you see all around you, life for many people, what am I saying? God uses... Uh, Joseph's hateful brothers, uh, Potiphar's wife, false accusations, unfair prison sentence, watch this, King Saul was jealous, spirit unwrapped David's crown for kingship. Can somebody give me an amen? amen. So in Matt 5, 23 and 24, this is powerful. Therefore, you will bring you a gift at the altar. Remember that your brother... Uh, that has something against you, leave your gift at the altar so that way first reconcile with your brother, then uh, offer your gift. Mm -hmm. So in other words, through that person, through your trials, you have to pay the price through that sacrifice, through that journey that God put you through. Now, uh, and I'll get into this in the next program at 7.30 to 8.30, and Dr. Karen and I will unwrapped, and you'll love this, how Saul... You remember, he was the the crown, the people of Israel wanted a king. And my question to you, Dr. Glenn, is he, uh, they, he just threw him right in as king. No wilderness, no experience, wasn't trained, threw him right in. Through shortcomings of his own, and I'll get into this deeper, he had some success, and that's how he started out as king. Where David all of a sudden was king and went through all hell, but he was the best king we ever had. Now, I'll get into that in a minute, but... My point is we leave our gift at the altar so we may go first to reconcile with our brother. In other words, what we're going through, the wilderness, people 
unwrap each other's gift. We need trials through offense. We need trials that people, you, that person that's offending you at the office, that business uh, deal that you, you haven't closed because the guy's being a drunk, that's the one that's unwrapping your gift to move to that next level. Mm -hmm. And through these trials, you can't get there until you go through these trials. Mm -hmm. So which means we have to go through the unwrapping the paper to unlock our gifts where we are as well. By the way, gifts hide people. You don't really get to know the people until you unwrap that gift and who they are. Your thought, Dr. Glenn. That's so good. So good. Um, I, I really believe that it's through our humility is where we really receive our blessings. I believe that um, through humility we receive protection. I believe that through humility we receive a, a, a supernatural perspective on what life really is about. And I believe that if we go back to the story of Ruth, we'll see that she was put in a place and all she was thinking, listen to me when I say this, all Ruth wanted to do was take care of her family. And because of her humility, she ended up being placed in a position where she'll take care of a nation. Watch this scripture right here. Mm, so right. if we go back to the scripture, uh, Ruth chapter 2, and we look at um, verse 10. Now, Boaz has basically told her, look, uh, I, I, I'll, you can continue to do what you're doing. And I've, and here comes the protection. I, thank you, Holy Spirit. Here comes the protection. And I've told my people, don't bother you. So she is now not only allowed to receive a blessing, but she's being protected. Now watch this. Ruth fell, verse 10, Ruth fell at his feet and thanked him warmly. What have I done to deserve such kindness? She said, I, um, I am only a foreigner. For some of you right now, you're going to be placed in a position in 2019 where you're going to be wondering, why do I deserve such blessing? Why, what have I done to deserve this? And I want you to understand that it's not a matter of you deserving it because none of us deserve any blessing that God has given us. But it's because of our obedience that we receive those supernatural blessings that will overtake you, that will consume you, that will put you in a position to where you don't even know how you will even maintain it because what it's going to do is it's going to push you out into the deep. And when you're pushed out into the deep, it puts you in a place where you have to rely on something or someone. And the reason why God is going to push you out into the deep is because he wants you to have greater faith in him that he's going to take care of you. And watch this. In verse 11, this is what Boaz says. Yes, I know, Boaz replied, but I... Also know about everything you have done for your mother-in-law since the death of her of your husband. I have heard how you left your father and mother and your own land to live here among complete strangers. When you come in and start ministering and helping Vision TV, what the king is going to say, the king, I'm talking about the king of heaven, is going to say this. I've seen you labor. I've seen you help this ministry when it was at ground level. I've seen when you've had nothing at all to give, you gave what you have. And because of your giving, your generosity, I'm going to bless you above and beyond your wildest dreams. So get ready. As you get ready to come into the ministry, Pastor Joshua is going to give us more information about that. Tomorrow is a very special day for this ministry. You will see a supernatural blessing from the Lord in your humility. Uh, Pastor Matt, before we only got five minutes left, why don't you close the time of prayer and we'll give our final thought. Okay. Heavenly Father, mighty King of heaven and earth, you are good and your throne endures forever. Yes. Father, you are worthy of praise, God, honor, admiration, Father God, and all of our recognition belongs to you, Father, because every good thing, God, it comes from you. You get no credit for the bad, Father, but all credit for the good. Mm -hmm. And, Lord, we confess that we are not worthy, Lord, of your relationship, Father, your presence, Lord God. Truly, we deserve hell, Father, but if not for the sacrifice of your Son. So we thank you, Lord, that though we're not worthy, though, Father, we are undeserving, you still have chosen us, Lord God, and you still love us, Father. So we would ask you, Lord, that you would bless this ministry, Father God, that the faith, Lord, of the man, Dr. Joshua, God, would be great and greater and greater, Father, increasing, ever-increasing, Father, yes. Lord, as he moves forward in this vision that you placed in his heart, Father, and over Dr. Ken, Lord God, and over our friends, Lord God, and all the partners, Lord, and all the, the fellowship ministers inside of this, this ministry, mighty King, that you would, Lord, truly be at the forefront, God, yes. that, that you would direct the steps, Heavenly Father, of our path, Father, as we follow it. We would know, God, that we were following your lead, Lord, that our eyes be, would, would be fixed on you, Lord, that our ears be intent to your voice, Lord God, to your every rustling of your, of your robe, Lord God. We would be so closely intent upon you, Lord, that we would not even stray, Father, in our, in our littlest hearing, Father yes. God. But every single movement you make, God, we want to be with you, Father, following you, Lord, doing as you say. And Lord, I ask you, Father, for supernatural favor 
Lord God, in grace and mercy, Lord God, in provision, that you would continue to pour into, Father God, the soil that you have found to be good. Yes. And Lord God, that we would be good ministers, Father God, that the stewardship over this place would be impeccable, Father God, that no one, Heavenly Father, would have anything in their mind other than pleasing you. Yes. And we glorify you, Father, that these are people, Lord, that that is their heart's intent, Lord God, and we glorify you for that. We thank you for that. Father, along with everything you've done in 2018, Lord God, we're leaving behind everything that wanted to hold us down, Lord God, and moving forward into the good and into the new that you have for us. Believing it in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Very Amen. good. Amen. Dr. Glenn, why don't you close with a prophetic word and I'll close this out the last minute. I believe in the year 2019, God is wanting us to be generous. He's changed your life around. He's allowed you to go through some things in 2018, all for the purpose of preparing you for what he has in store for you. Amen. Now, here's what you have to understand. A test only builds a testimony. So make sure that in this next year, that as you go through these tests, that you count them all joy because they're preparing you for your next level. What you're going through in, in 2018, you're going to see it again in 2019, but you're going to be able to say, I, I've seen you before. You just have a different face and I've already conquered this thing. Get out of my way as I prepare for my next level of right. ministry in God. So come out and join us at Vision TV and allow God to use you in a way he's never used you before. Hallelujah. Powerful words. I want to thank you so much for watching. I want to say one last thing in closing. Don't you dare turn that channel. We, uh, I want to get back into it with Dr. Karen about why, of course we'll bring Pastor Mac back with us, uh, how to unwrap our gifts, our special calling, and why it's so, all that struggling you've done all last year, why that comes into play and how God's going to turn it all around. And the last thought is, I want to talk about favor, the blessings of generosity, how that opens the door to the future that you have in wealth and in prosperity. Until next week, I'm Dr. Ken, Dr. Glenn, Pastor Matt. We'll see you with Dr. J next week on Prosperity is Yours. Good night.